Welcome to my channel. Today I want to have a look at the crater Copernicus on the moon. During the last 10 or 15 years I made uh, 20 or 30 pictures of Copernicus and they're all different. I'll start with three little films I made in, nine, in 2013, in December, and the pictures I made out of these films. The crater Copernicus has a diameter of about 93 kilometers, a depth, depth of about 3700 meters, and the central mountain complex consists of various hills around 700 meters high. At full moon the crater stands out because of its radiant rays, which you can even make out with uh, your bare eyes. The bright rays spread out from the crater for up to 400 kilometers. Copernicus is, geologically speaking, a recent impact crater. With the help of material collected by the Apollo 12 mission, the age was estimated to be around 800 to 1000 billion years. To put this in perspective, life on Earth is, at that time, consisting of single-cell organisms, about that reason. So, uh, that's really not that reason. At the time of the impact on the moon, there might have been several impacts on the Earth too, too causing thousands of years of Earth as a snowball, the cryogenic geological, geological period, they call it. It may have been created by debris, debris from the breakup of a parent body of an asteroid called 495 Eulalia. 800 million years ago, so, uh, well, that's for a recent time. You can see the crater very well when it's full moon, and also when it's just after, just past first quarter moon, as you can see on these pictures. Let me try and have a look at the pictures myself. Well, I made a lot of pictures, as you can see, and uh, there you go. The crater Copernicus was named Copernicus by Grimaldi and Riccioli. They made a map of the moon around 1640, working together and using instruments to measure lunar mountains, the heights, and they drew an accurate map for their age, or selenograph as they called it, of the moon. It was published by Riccioli. He gave them the names of all the objects on the moon that we still use today. Like Mara Tranquillitatis, where Apollo 11 landed in 1969. Ariccioli now named large lunar areas for the weather. He named craters for significant astronomers, grouping them by philosophies and time periods. Although Riccioli officially rejected the Copernican theory, he did name a prominent lunar crater Copernicus, and he named other important craters also after proponents of the Copernican theory, people like Kepler, Galilei, Lambergius, and also, also Aristarchus, who already told us that the Earth is circling around the Sun a few hundred years before the birth of Christ. Already in, 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 in antiquity, so... Uh, because craters that he and Grimaldi named after themselves are in the same general vicinity as these craters, while craters named for some other Jesuit astronomers, like they were, are in different parts of the moon, near the very prominent crater named for Tycho Brahe, for example, Rigolis, Lunar nomenclature has at times been considered to be a tacit expression of sympathy for the Copernican theory that, as a Jesuit, he could not publicly support. However, Riccioli got away with it. He said he put the Copernicans all in the stormy water, waters, the Oceanum Procellarum. That was a long story. If you like my channel, please like and 
subscribe to the channel so you will receive notice when I publish a new video. At the beginning and the end of this video you can, you can see two QR codes, one for my website and one for my moon atlas. Also including in this video I will put the, the map Riccioli, Riccioli made and a modern map made in the 70s. So you can see the difference and you can see that we still use the same names and also I will put down some a card with some information about the moon. Let me see where am I? Well, I'm still uh, we're still moving through a lot of pictures of Copernicus. As you can see, at every day of the moon month, it looks different. And now we're going to get to some pictures. I think that are made more towards the full moon. As you can see, now you can start to see the rays. You can only see them at full moon or near full moon. To the left of Copernicus you can see the crater Kepler. And you can see the mountain ranges around Copernicus. Here you can see the rays again. I think I put two the same pictures in the movie now. Anyhow, this is uh, this is the picture I took at full moon. As you can see, you can see lots of rays, and you have difficulties to see the craters. One more zoomed out picture above Copernicus. You can see Montes Carpathos, the Carpathian Mountains. Let me see what is next. Well, there's another one. This is almost the last one. And then we are going to get to the map Riccioli made. With all the features we still use on it. And as you can see, the crater Copernicus is in the middle of the sea or the ocean of storms. Together with Kepler and Aristarchus. For comparison, we'll have a look at a new map made in the 70s, I think, or in the 60s, by Mr. Kuiper, Gerard Peter Kuiper, the Dutch astronomer working for NASA. Made from a lot of pictures they took of the moon. It was a giant job to do this. Now we're going to get some information about the moon. If you want to read this, you have to stop the video because uh, nobody can read this fast. Well, that's it for this today. Uh, before I forget, uh, my name is Wim. I'm a sidewalk astronomer based in Zwolle City, the Netherlands. If you want to watch the stars together with me, scan this code and email me. My email is on my website. Well, that's it for today. Bye, and maybe we will meet again on the streets watching the moon. Bye!